Lover, you have broken every chain oh, And you gave me a new name With the way you changed my story I just really can't explain So when they ask me how I made it I'll just point and say it's you Cause I'm standing here today Cause I've been delivered by the truth Also in the name of Jesus is a wonderful something I'm just saying thank you I'm free. Oh, yeah, sing a new song. Claim your freedom. Testify. Testify. Claim your freedom. Claim your freedom. Testify. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God. I've got my Praise the Lord. And I will sing of your goodness. And I will sing of your mercy. Turning around for me. This is my testimony. My testimony. Oh, yeah. Jesus, you have turned my life around. I'm a living testimony. I'm so blinded by your grace. You are the truth that lights my way. Everyone's asking how I'm smiling, waiting to make me smile. Lord, you've given me my freedom, so I will sing and testify. So in the name of Jesus, I am free. Oh, yeah. Hey, good morning, everyone. We're so glad you're with us this morning. Welcome to Reach Church. And uh, uh, in a few moments, we're just going to get right into uh, what God has really given me to, uh, to bless you this morning. And um, just a, a little bit of a relaxed environment this morning. Uh, but we're really glad to have you watching live. Whether you're watching live on Facebook or YouTube, uh, we're really glad to have you this morning. And uh, I want to encourage you to take a few moments as people begin to join us on Facebook and YouTube. 
I want to take a moment and encourage you to go back and, and watch last week. I know the audio, it was a little bit different. My wife and I uh, were out of town, and, uh, uh, and so we did the, we did the live feed um, you know, from out of town, and we used the microphone on the computer, so the, the audio, you can hear us clearly, uh, but you hear some background noise and things like that. Uh, it wasn't as crystal clear as I am now and as I usually am when we're, uh, when we're live. So, um, you know, but I do want to encourage you to go back and watch um, it. A lot of people, a lot of people watched last week. It was a blessing. We kind of, the Lord kind of diverted us a little bit, <clears throat> which is why I'm going to go back to, um, you know, the, the, uh, the message and the series uh, that I'm on. But uh, we got diverted a little bit because my wife started, she just, she just, she just kind of went at it in a powerful way. The Lord used her mightily, so I want to encourage you to, uh, to go back and, uh, and watch it. But while people are joining us, uh, you, can, uh, you can turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4, and then we're going we're gonna to flip over to Hebrews chapter 6. And, uh, and last week, we had flipped over to Hebrews chapter 6, but uh, the Lord had kind of diverted us in a different direction, which is always a good thing. It's always a good thing to have the Lord uh, divert and change you, because I don't know about you, I'd rather go the way of the Lord uh, any time of the day or week than go in my own direction and, and, and really not see what I should be seeing because I went my own way. And uh, we all know the word says that my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So uh, the Lord just took us in a different direction last week. But I, I, I really do want to want to encourage you to, to go back. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, go to Reach Church Tampa and subscribe and then click the notifications button so that uh, so that you can be notified every time we go live. And it might be easier to find last week's service uh, January 17th, I believe it was, uh, on YouTube versus scrolling through all of our, our Facebook things. So, um, but I just wanted to sit down and just kind of chill uh, this morning and, uh, and, and, and go back to uh, what we've been discussing, and that is what do you, uh, what do you want? Jeremiah, it's good to see you online. Uh, I know there's several people watching via Facebook and YouTube. Um, and, uh, uh, I only get to see here cause I've got my phone here that lets me know. I only get to see, uh, the Facebook side of things, um, as far as that, but, uh, but we're glad and we're happy for all of you that are watching. I want to say a special hello to all of our reach church members that, uh, have not just been able to, have not been able to make it due to COVID. We love you. Uh, I know that, that some are being very careful, uh, because of, their health situation and <clears throat> whether they're high risk or what have you. We just want you to know that we love you. We do miss you. Uh, we do miss you. We'd love for you to pop in, even if it's for 10 minutes, so that we can hug your neck and you can have your mask on, but we'd love to see you. It's just been, for some of you, it's just, it's just been so long and your family. So uh, don't make me come to your house. I'm just playing. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, and then <clears throat> I want to encourage you to uh, put your finger, bookmark, piece of paper in Hebrews uh, chapter 6, and this message really is for you. I believe that, uh, that God gave me this message uh, for whoever wants to receive it. I don't believe these messages are for a specific person. I believe it's for whoever wants to receive it. 2 Kings chapter 4. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> the, the, the layout of what's happening in this passage of Scripture is Elisha was always coming to town, uh, the town of Shunem. And there was a woman there that uh, her and her husband had room in the house. And Elisha would always stay there. But there came a time where she had been so blessed by the man of God that she went to her husband and said, uh, let's build a chamber. Let's build a room for this man. I perceive that he's a man of God. And so that he has a place to lay his head and a place to get food 
uh, every time he comes to town. So to lay this out uh, is that this woman that Elisha was stopping in to see, it had happened on a number of occasions. So this was not a, a one-time thing. This is something that this woman had been consistently faithful with. If you've been watching last week and then uh, uh, two weeks prior to that, and you feel like I'm preaching the same message, <clears throat> you're sadly mistaken. Every single week, the Lord has taken us, taken us into a different direction, and it's been extremely, extremely good. So I want to encourage you, don't tune out. I'm not going to be with you long uh, this morning. We're just getting right into it. Um, but this, the, 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 the floor plan of this message, the blueprint is that Elisha came to town and did this regularly, and this woman created a space. So there's a couple of ways that we can look at this, um, and then we'll pray. Uh, there's a couple of ways that we can look at this. We can look at it as this woman <coughs> was taking what she had. She was taking what she had and using it for the glory of God. No matter how much or how little, she was taking what she had and using it for the purposes and the plans of God. Now, we do understand this woman was a wealthy woman. She was very influential. Uh, she was a very uh, uh, prestige woman, uh, prestigious woman, and very, as I said, influential woman in the town of Shunem. Um, and so she had a lot of say. Uh, she was not poor by any means. Um, she did not need anything materialistically. She did not need her mortgage paid. She did not need her car payment paid. She wasn't doing this for any ulterior motive. And I know sometimes in the body of Christ, we have been taught, and some people, <clears throat> when they do something, excuse me, sorry, when they do something, they do it with intent for return, to get something in return. Um, that's not the case here. Uh, this woman didn't, from the surface, she didn't need anything. She didn't um, plant a seed into someone just to get something in return. She recognized that this was a man of God and there was a need. Um, and so, as a Christian, it's important to realize <clears throat> when the church or someone in the body of Christ is in need, it's not always in that situation, it's not always about God, am I supposed to? Am I supposed to? I believe that we as Christians, we spiritualize things way too much, and I need to pray about this. Well, you know, there's some things and some people that God brings into your life and some circumstances that God brings into your life that he brought it to you because you have the resources. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know what's happening this morning. We'll get through my throat issue, I apologize. Sometimes God brings things because he's blessed you with the ability to be a blessing to someone in that area. So she didn't necessarily need to get all deep about it and say, God, am I supposed to? Do you want me to do this? It's, it wasn't even about that. It was, I have a resource that's going to help this man of God in this particular <clears throat> situation, and she didn't really need to go into a 21-day fast about it. Now, I know there's time we need to fast to get answers for ourselves, and I get that, <clears throat> but this woman, she didn't need to go into a fast. She had a resource, and the man of God needed it, but as we go in deeper in this, we will realize there was a need that this woman had that she had buried. But before we go there and before we go into the word, let's pray. Father, I thank you today. This is your day. <clears throat> this is a day you've made. <clears throat> and we will rejoice. We will be glad in it because we trust you. We know that every single thing that is happening today in our life is because you ordained it or you ordained us and gave us the strength to overcome it. There's nothing too difficult for us this day. And as we go to your word and as we just dialogue today and discuss what you have for us, 
I ask that you go right through this live stream and recording, whether people are watching it later or now, and touch everyone that's watching in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that God's going to meet you at your greatest point of need. Now, follow me. For those of you just joining in, we're in 2 Kings chapter 4. We haven't left there for a few services now, but it's, it's different every service. So don't think, oh, I already heard this. I'll go back and watch the previous one. Because if you do, you're going to miss something because I'm going to say something different today than, I, than I've been saying. That's just the way it happens. 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning in verse 11. One day, Elisha returned to Shunem, and he went up to this upper room to rest. For those of you that may be just joining on, rewind later, and you'll be able to see what we're talking about. He went up to the upper room of this woman's place, and verse 12, he said to his servant Gehazi, tell the woman from Shunem, I want to speak to her. And when she appeared, Elisha said to Gehazi, in other words, I need you to translate, tell her... We appreciate the kind concern that you have shown us. What can we do for you? And that's the title uh, of today's message, uh, you know, in, in a sense, and that is, what do you want? I believe in this season that we're in right now, I believe that God, hi Betty, it's good to see you online, I believe that God is saying, I know what you need, but what is it that you want? We have this mindset as believers that we only go to God with what we need. Well, let me tell you something. The Word tells us that He knows what we need before we ever even needed it. And so if He already knows what we need and He feeds the birds of the air and clothes the lilies of the field, how is it that He doesn't know what we need? And a number of uh, weeks ago, I was walking on the property and was sharing with the Lord because we're facing some things uh, you know, we've had some breakthroughs even this week, um, but we're facing some things uh, from a ministry standpoint, uh, in our business standpoint, and also personally. And I was talking with the Lord, and I started sharing some things that I, I need. Hey, Chris, it's good to see you online, man. Long time no see, brother. Good to see you. Um, there's some things that we need. <clears throat> and the Lord said to me, he said, Brian, I know what you need, but what is it that you want? Now, this was before I went to this passage of Scripture. And, um, and the Lord said, I know what you need, but what is it that you want? I think we forget sometimes that God is not just wanting to come into our lives in the seasons where we need something. We need a miracle. Uh, we need a healing. We need a breakthrough. Listen, we've got to get out of the mindset as Christians that God is only going to intervene and come up on the scene when we need something. And, 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 and I, I, as a dad, I'm a father of four. And I can tell you right now, as a father, every single day, I search for things that my daughters and my wife want. But in, in this specific instance, we're talking as a father, our father God with us. When I go into a store, I go shopping, uh, I'm just sitting at home or whatever. I am constantly as a father. I'm thinking about, you know, my daughter's, you know, I remember one of my daughters saying she wants this. I want to bless them with what they want because my love for them goes beyond what they need. What they need, they don't have to ask me for. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Sometimes we get so deep and we forget the simplicities and it causes us to miss some very good principles in our life and cause us to stress, cause us to freak out about things that we should never even be stressing about. I don't, my daughters, they come to me one time. Dad, I need this, I need this. If you, are you going to the store? I need this. They don't have to say it more than once or twice. or They might have to remind me. But I, it, it, when it's something they need, I know they need it. I'm going to get it for them. But when it's something that they want, I love providing something that they want. And our Father, our Father in heaven, who loves us, sent his only begotten Son to die for us. He wants to know what is it that you want. He already knows what you need. Now, I'm not talking about name it, claim it, I want a Mercedes Benz, I want a 6,000 square foot home. Don't ask for stuff that you don't want the responsibility to take care of. 
Come on, somebody. Throw up an amen there in the comment section. Don't ask for something you're not prepared and ready to take on. That's not what I'm talking about. But, you know, sometimes through my, through, through my life, I've been in situations where I haven't even gone to the Lord and asked Him for what I want. I thought, man, I really I want that. And then before I even know it, maybe days or weeks later, the Lord actually supplies that because the Bible tells me He knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So He knows the intention that I have in my heart to want those things. And if they're not unselfish, which it doesn't even bother God if we want something just because we want it for ourselves. My girls want certain types of shoes. They don't, you know, I can't shop anywhere just for shoes for them. But I'm okay with that. If I can provide it, I'm going to provide it for them. I don't, God, God is not just about meeting the need. He wants you as his daughter, as his son, to be fulfilled in your relationship with him. Now, that's not materialistic. We can be fulfilled in other areas. We're fulfilled. If God never did another thing for me the rest of the days of my life, he's already done enough for me to love him unconditionally. He's already done enough. But God wants to meet you, and God wants to supply the thing that you've forgotten about. As I stated in the comments on Facebook, you'll see this is the season, I believe, of the forgotten about. What is it that you have always desired in your life that you have actually forgotten about? God wants to supply that thing that you've forgotten about. Now, let's go back to the scripture here. Elisha was telling Gehazi to tell the woman... We appreciate the kind concern you have shown us. What can we do for you? God is saying, what is it that you want? And she said this. No, she replied, my family, watch this, in the back half of verse 13, my family takes good care of me. No complaints. I'm not asking for anything. You know, sometimes you want to do more for the person who never asks for anything. My wife, we've been, this May, we'll be celebrating 21 years of marriage, our 20th anniversary. We, that's why we were online uh, from the hotel, actually, last week, is during, our, during COVID, you know, our 20th anniversary fell last May, and there really wasn't much that we could do, and so we celebrated late, just last weekend. And um, in, a, in a larger scale where we went away for a few days by ourselves, and, uh, and so we've been married close to 21 years, and we've been together 22, almost 23. And, um, and one thing about my wife, she's not materialistic. She gorgeous woman. I mean, this woman is fly. But as all of you know, you've been watching this online. But she's not materialistic. She's not all about diamonds and pearls and, and all this sort of thing. She's not a materialistic woman. She's never asked for anything major she doesn't care what car she drives she as long as it's safe it runs good she'll get in that vehicle transport our children our family my wife is not uh, a materialistic woman now she has a desire one day to have a bmw she's not even asking for a brand new one she would like to have it because as a kid she always liked them and i am going to provide it for her one day amen but uh she'd like to have that but she's not a materialistic woman she's not Diamonds and pearls and, and expensive and all of this, very simplistic, just wants love at its fullest. And because she's that way, my desire as her husband is I always want to give her the best of the best because she never asks for anything. You know, she loves me in all my uh, failures and all my downturns and all my weaknesses and all my strengths. Uh, she's loved me unconditionally over the years. And because of that, I want to do, I want to give, I just told her recently, outside of loving Jesus and loving the Lord and fulfilling everything that God has for me in my life, outside of that, I have one goal, and that's to give her the best part of this world that I could ever give her. Um, I want to give her the world. One day I'll take her to Rome. That's one of her greatest desires is to go to Rome and us sit in one of those little boats and travel down the little water in between all the hotels. And uh, I forgot what you call it, um, but we went to Vegas, and I, there's a word for it, but we went to Vegas on our one-year anniversary. Uh, so she doesn't have a lot of 
materialistic desire. She's just a very simplistic woman. But because of that, as her husband, I want to give her everything. I want to give her everything. I, there's nothing I, I will give to her before I give to myself. There's nothing I wouldn't do for her. When we have a relationship with our father and we love him and we just care about communicating with him and we don't always go to him and I, 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 and every once in a while we go to the Lord and we say, God, it would be nice to have this. Do you really think, do you have that much of a finite mind? And I don't mean that critically. I mean it in a challenging way. I don't mean that correcting. I mean it directing. Do we really have that finite of a mind that when we have a relationship with God where the love grows deep and we are in love with one another, he is in love with us and we are in love with him, do we really think for one moment that he has a problem when you come to him and ask him, Lord, it would be really nice to have this. And all the, the, the weeks and months and years prior, you've been doing nothing but taking care of the kingdom of God, which is why I want to lead us now to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6. Turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6 because this is something that really opened up my eyes to the connection of these two verses. I don't mean they were meant to be connected, but I'm saying they connect in this way. Do we really think that God has a problem with you as his child saying, Lord, it would be really nice to have this. And for those of you that don't really understand the promised land, the promised land that you are living is right now. The promised land is not heaven. For many of you old schoolers that, hi, Tina, it's good to see you. It's always good to see Tina online. It's good to see you. You're so faithful. Watch us so often, almost every single week. We love you. God bless you. But for those of you that don't really truly understand the promised land, the promised land is not heaven. It's important that you understand this. The promised land is not heaven because in the promised land, there are giants. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are no giants that are going to need to be defeated in heaven. The promised land that flows with milk and honey is right here on the earth. God's God has a promised land living for you right now, right now, 2021, right here on the earth, wherever you're located on the planet, God has a promised land living, the kind that flows with milk and honey right here on the earth. So we have got to erase this mindset that God does not want to bless us with what we want. He does. He wants to bless us. Now watch this, because it's important to realize when we put the kingdom of God first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Hebrews chapter 6, beginning in verse 9. Let's, let, let, let's, let's drop back one verse. Dear friends, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Dear friends, even though we are talking this way, we really don't believe it applies to you, but we are confident that you are meant for better things, things that come with salvation. Watch this, with salvation. When we give our lives to God and we surrender our lives to the Lord, there are benefits as children that come along with that. My children, because they are my children and were birthed out of my loins, they walk in the favor that I walk in. I was just talking to someone the other day and telling them we were talking about finances and talking about money and things and property, and I said to them, I said, favor goes further than the dollar. It, you, we, we need to understand that we are children of the Most High God, and when you're a child of the Most High God, you have favor that goes far beyond any dollar figure. So if you're watching me right now, whether live or on a replay, and your bank account is low, you need not worry because when you are a child of the Most High God, you have favor that no one else has. You walk in the favor 
of God, and we're talking about the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. We're talking about a God that in order to get into his realm, you have to walk through gates of gold. You have to walk through the pearly gates. I'm talking about a God who does not lack anything. I'm talking about a God who speaks. When he doesn't have something, Betty, he speaks and it comes into existence. That's the type of daddy, Abba Father, that we serve. So we need to understand that. Look at this. When we get saved, it says right here, we are confident that you are meant for better things, things that come with salvation. I'm here to tell somebody right now, whatever it is you have right now and that you're thankful for, that you're blessed with, I got news for you. God's got better for you. God's got better for you. See, f- not don't flip over in your Bible, but flip back to 2 Kings chapter 4 where we were talking about the woman from Shunam, the Shunammite woman. She said when Elisha sent Gehazi the message to ask her, what is it that you need from us? She said, I don't need anything. I have no complaints. I, I'm, my family provides for me. She, she, she did not ask for anything. However, the man of God who represented God's voice in that season of the Old Testament said, but wait a minute. God wants to give you more. There's something that you desire. There's something that you desire that's deeper than materialistic things. So I'm asking somebody right now, what dream, what passion, what desire, what purpose is it that you have, that you've buried, that you've forgotten about, and you have basically put on the shelf and said, this is probably never going to happen. I believe in this season of your life, God is saying, I want to make it happen for you. I want to make it happen for you. Because as as my child, who is part of my family, with salvation comes these benefits. Watch this, verse 10. We're talking about what do you want. Verse 10. For God is not unjust. He's not unjust. Watch this. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown action. Listen to me. Action. Shown is an action verb. It is action. You took action. Don't be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. You've been a doer of the word. You've not just been a hearer. You've not just been a speaker of the word. You've been a doer of the word. And because you've been a doer and because you've shown action, God is now saying right here, God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. So you're faithful and committed to putting God's house first. As a result of that, God in turn is saying to you as his child, he's in turn saying to you, now you have taken care of me, what can I do for you? What is it that you have been desiring that your resources, I feel this, I, I feel this right now, what is it that you've been desiring that your resources do not in, enable you to get. God is saying, I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. I'll bring it to you. Why? Because you have shown your love to me by caring for me and others as you still do. This is not a one-time thing that you've done. You've stayed committed to the things of God. You've stayed committed to tithing and giving. You've stayed committed to serving in the house of God. You've stayed committed to the call and the purpose, that job that you're on, that you felt that God has said, I want you to stay, but you wanted to go, but you've stayed, and you've obeyed the Lord. Your obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says. And because you've been obedient, God is now saying, in this season, I'm going to bring you what you have forgotten about and thought that I would never do for you. I I believe, I want to challenge everyone watching, write down on a piece of paper, however you remind yourself, whether it's in a calendar 
on the mirror? What is it that you've forgotten about that God gave you a desire to see in your life come to pass? What is it? Write it down. Begin to speak it and thank God for it. And I bet in the coming days, weeks, and months, I bet you're going to begin to see that thing or those things that God has revealed to you that you've forgotten about down deep on the inside of you. God's going to bring those things to pass. Now, if you don't have the faith for it, then maybe this, this message, maybe you're not ready for this message. But I believe that you are. I believe that you are. If you will stop doubting and walking in fear and concern, I believe that you are ready to go deeper and you are ready to experience the fulfilling life that God has established for you. I believe it with all of my heart. Because this is how you have shown your love to God, through action, not just words. You've put words, I mean, you've put action to your words. When you say, I am a Christian, that means I am Christ-like. I act like Christ, I talk like Christ, I walk like Christ, I speak like Christ. When you say I'm a Christian, Christian means Christ-like. I am Christ-like. And if we are Christ-like, then we understand that I am not about me, I am about my Father's business. When you put God's house first, God will provide for you and God will take care of your house. I can't tell you how many times in my life that I've been on the brink of loss and God has preserved and God has saved. In the very last minute, let me tell you something, God is a God of the midnight hour. He wants us to trust Him until it's almost gone. He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to love Him. He wants us to put Him first. And there are times and seasons of our life where we are tested in that. We are tested. We are tried. But let me tell you something. The only thing that's going to last is that that has been tried by the fire. I have jewelry that is made of pure gold and I've had it for many many years because that gold was purified it has lasted through the test of time I have a silver necklace that is it's not real silver it is the fake silver so every few days you got to take a rag to it and you got to polish it to make it look good it's not been tested it's not been brought through the fire are you understanding what I'm saying? Cosmetic jewelry, ladies, has not been tested by the fire. So you might wear it today and it look beautiful and put it on six months from now and it's tarnished. Why? Because you paid $6.99 for it at Target. Or sorry, Target. <laughs> it's not been tested by the fire. Let me tell you something. Some of the things that you've been through in your life, you've been tested and tried by the fire. That which has gone through the fire will last. But that which has not been tested through the fire, when trials come, they will tarnish and they will fade away. But that which has been tried by the fire, count it all joy. <clears throat> count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations. For it is the trying of your faith that produces patience. There are some things that I am going to go through in the future that aren't even going to sway me. You know why? Because in recent months and years, I've gone through some stuff, and what I've gone through with what I've gone through in my life, what I'm about to go through ain't nothing compared to what I've been through. So what I'm about to go through ain't even going to sway me. Because in certain areas and aspects of my life, I've been tried through the fire. And so have you. There's been times recently in your life <clears throat> that you've been tried through the fire and you made it. By the grace and by the mercy of God, you made it through the fire. I got news for you. What you are going through right now, you're going to make it through that fire. Some people say, I'm going through hell. That's just the thing. You're going through it. You ain't staying there. 
Somebody needed to hear that today. You're not staying there. You're going through. You're going through. You're going through the fire. Through the scriptures. Throughout the scriptures, there are people that have been through the fire. They've been through the trials. They've been through the tribulations, which is why you see in the scripture when they go through things later, it doesn't even sway them. It doesn't even move them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ask Peter. When I, when I, when I step into glory, you know, hopefully, you know, 40, 50 years from now, when I step into, into glory, one of the things I want to ask Peter is, what was it like to be rebuked by Jesus himself? What was it like to have Jesus turn to you and say, get thee behind me, Satan, and you have in your mind, he, did he just call me Satan? Now, he didn't call Peter Satan. He was call, calling the spirit behind which was influencing Peter Satan. But I want to ask Peter, because Peter's also the one that walked on water. What did it feel like to be rebuked by Jesus and say, say get thee behind me, Satan, but yet walk on water to him, the only one to be strong enough to walk on the water? What did that feel like? Those are the those are the sit down at the at the bar table coffee talks with stool that I want to I want to have. You know, you watch on social media now. We sit down at the table and have 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 coffee talks with with each other. I want to sit down and have a coffee talk with Peter. And I want to say to him, you know, what was it like to walk on the water to Jesus? But yet just not long prior to that, uh, actually be rebuked by him and say, get thee behind me, Satan. What did that what did that feel like? You know what I'm saying? What did that, I mean, I can't even imagine. Well, I mean, if I were walking behind, walking with Jesus and he said, get thee behind me, Satan, I can't even imagine what that would make me feel like as an individual. I, he, what? You understand what I'm saying? There are certain people I want to have, I want to have some coffee talks, like with Paul. I want to say, what did it feel like to preach so long that somebody fell from the third story and died while you were preaching? What was going through your mind when someone fell while you were while you were preaching, because you were preaching past the midnight hour. The Bible says in, in Acts uh, 27, I believe it is, that he was preaching, and, or Acts 20, I think, and, 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 and he fell from the third floor, and he died because he was preaching after midnight. The Bible says he was preaching into the next day. And what did that feel like to be preaching so long that someone died? Tell me about that. What, is that, what does that feel? That's, that's, some, that's some good dialogue conversation that I want to have, you know, all the fluff, so much of the fluff that we hear people preaching nowadays. I, uh, you know, I don't want to hear about any fluff. I want to, I want to talk to some of these men and women. I want to talk to Ruth. What, what did it feel like when you had the opportunity and the right to leave Naomi? What, what did that feel like? But you made the decision to stay, and then God provided Boaz, and you ended up being the leader of those that you used to pick up the 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 the, the scraps from. What did that feel like? within a matter of days or weeks, what did that feel like going from rags to riches? You know, what did that, I want, I want to talk to Ruth and I want to find out what that was like. You know, I, w I want to talk to Noah and I want to see what Noah thinks about the conversation that he had with God when God told him that he was going to flood the earth and there had never been rain. I want to I want to I want to talk to Noah and I want to see what it was like building an ark in, ta in in anticipation of something that had never happened. I want to I want to see what Noah was saying. See, everybody's enthralled and blown away at the manifestation of the miraculous. I want to understand the process of the miraculous. Oh, come on, somebody! I you know that. that I want to understand the process of the miraculous. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I want, I, I, I love seeing the miracles. I love seeing the breakthroughs. But I want, I want to understand the process of Noah's relationship with God and the conversations between Noah and God that aren't in the Bible. Oh, but wait a minute. I thought everything that... God spoke to Noah was in the Bible. No, 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 no. The Bible only consists of the seed of the knowledge of God. This doesn't hold every conversation that every person in the Bible ever had with God. I want to talk to Noah about the conversations. when I, I want to sit down and have an espresso with Noah. And I want to ask him, 
tell me about the conversations that we didn't hear about in the Bible. Tell me about the dialogue between you and God that happened when God told you that he was going to destroy the earth through something that never happened before. Um, I want to know about that. I want to know, I want to know about that. I want, as I said, I want to, I want to hear from Ruth. You see, Ruth was a child of God as well. You see, we're talking about children that have access to things and God saying, what do you want? I want to talk to Ruth a little bit deeper about the fact that she had the right to leave Naomi like Oprah did. Oh, I'm sorry, not Oprah, Orpah. So you thought Oprah was new. Oprah was all the way back, you know, yeah, back, back, back in the day. You know, that's why she wears so much makeup, because she'd been around for a minute. Um, but I want to talk to Ruth a little bit about her right Y'all ain't saying nothing because I'm about to go here. I want to talk to Ruth about her right to leave Naomi to go find another husband. She had a right to do that. And logically, that's what made sense was for Ruth to leave Naomi's side because Naomi was too old to provide another son. And Naomi even said, if I were to have a son now, you would have to wait for 20, 30 years for him to grow. And by then, you would be old and older. It wouldn't wouldn't make sense. But Ruth had a right to leave, but she stayed. So let me ask you, we're talking about Hebrews 6.10 right here. God has not forgotten our labor of love. What is it, child of God, that you've had a right to do But out of obedience to God, you did not do what you had a physical right to do. That is what God is saying. You have shown your love towards me and your actions towards me. You have done this out of obedience to me. Now, child, what can I do for you? Ruth had a right to leave, but she stayed out of obedience to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? God is saying to you in this season, and I feel this very strongly, if you don't want to take it, I'll take it from me. I hear God saying, and I'm not off of this subject now in three sermons because I still hear God saying it, and I believe there's some people that need to get it at a deeper level. God is saying, you have put me first. Now I want to put you first. Do you understand what I'm saying? God, as your Father, is saying, you have shown your love towards me and care for others. This is your season. This is your season. This is your season. What is it that you want to see in your life? I, as your father, God speaking, I want to provide that for you. What is it that you want? I believe God will move mountains. I believe believe God will remove people. I believe God will bring you into the right path. I, I believe God will take your application. If you are believing God for a job, he'll take your application from the bottom and move it to the top. What is it that you want that you are believing him for that maybe you have forgotten about? God is saying, you have put me first. I have seen your labor, labor of love. It says, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked. The King James Version says, he will not forget your labor of love. How much have you loved God and served him over these weeks and months? Especially what I heard the Lord say is during COVID, in a time where you may have felt like you had a right to hold back, you put me first, God saying, and because of that, this is the season of the forgotten about. What is it that you want? You've put me first. Now, I am going to move heaven and earth to get you what is in your heart. I believe that with all of my heart. 
Flip back to 2 Kings chapter 4 for just a moment. 2 Kings chapter 4, why is it? Why is it that God is saying, what do you want? And I've only got a few more moments with you here this morning. Why is he saying that? Because this Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, she took what she had, and not only what she had, but they went over and above. How many of you have gone over and above for the things of God? When you in the natural had a right to pull back and say, I need this right now. Let's just, let's talk real, ladies and gentlemen, and not try to spiritualize everything. COVID was a season and is a season where in the natural, without being a person of faith, the natural, logical thing to do is to hold back in case there comes a season where you need. And that's fear. This woman, now remember, <laughs> sometimes we don't remember things. It was just back in 1 Kings 17 that this whole region, this whole area was in a famine and in a drought for three and a half years. Maybe you're not. <laughs> to fully understand this, you have to know the word. You have to understand the season that people are in when things are happening. There's a reason that God puts things in His way. They had just come out of a season of a three and a half year drought that Elijah prophesied them into and prophesied them out of. Elisha is the son, the spiritual son of Elijah. Everybody in that region knows it. So they just come out of a drought of three and a half years. You cannot tell me in their natural finite minds, they are not thinking, what if this happens again? See, oh, these are men of faith. These are women of faith. They just trust the Lord. No. These are human beings that went through famine, that went through drought, that went through pain, that went through suffering, and now this woman is in a season, in a season. remember, she's a Shunammite woman, very rich, very influential, but if you look in today's day and age, why are people that are rich able to make it through seasons of famine when other people aren't? It's because they know how to hold on to and sustain during those seasons. They plan ahead. This woman was very rich and very influential. Her family was rich and influential. But you cannot disregard the fact that they just came out of three and a half years of drought and famine. And here she is saying, this man is a man of God. Let's not only take what we have, but let's build extra for this man. She had no fear of what may come in the future based on what they just came out of in the past. Are you getting what I'm saying? They just came out of fear, doubt, worry. I mean, Elijah had to be fed by birds. That's how bad this famine was. Do you hear what I'm saying? Elijah had to be fed by the brook Cherith streams of water that was consistently over that three and a half year period drying up before his very eyes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? But they saw the miraculous during the famine. But they had a decision to make. Am I going to to make my decisions on the future based on the fear of the now. What decisions are you making? Are you in a position 
of making right now that you need to make right now? What decisions are you needing to make that you have been processing your decision based on the conditions of COVID-19? You cannot do that as a child of God. Whatever God says to you to do in this season, COVID or no COVID, we must obey because God knows what's in the future and God is setting you up for success even if famine, because ladies and gentlemen, I got news for you if you don't already know this, the world is only going to get worse. Well, I'm waiting for us to come out of COVID. Um, if you're waiting for us to come out of COVID to believe that something's going to happen for you, you're going to be waiting for a very long time. The world is going to get worse. The Bible tells us very clearly, the things of the world are going to get worse. But for the child of God, he makes provision where abundance is going to come to you when you're in famine. But in order for us to have an abundance, when we are about to go into a famine, we have to do what God is saying for us to do now because he's setting us up for preservation and abundance in the future. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. And no fear. As a child of God, you shouldn't be afraid of COVID. You need not be afraid of COVID. I have immediate, it's, 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 listen, I'm not saying it's not real. What I am saying is you don't need to live in, the flu, the regular flu is real. But you ain't walking around in fear of it. Well, because there's vaccines. I get that. I get that. I don't know when the last time is that I had a flu vaccine. All right, let's just talk real. I don't know. I, I don't think I've had a flu vaccine since I was a teenager. And I'm approaching 50 years old. In my life, over those years that I never had a flu vaccine, I probably have gotten the flu once or twice and was over it in two or three days. So if you're waiting for the vaccine to make sure that you don't catch it, your source isn't God. Yeah, I said it. I'm challenging you as a believer. If you're staying locked up in your house until the vaccine is proven so that you don't catch it, your source isn't God. Don't continue to lie to yourself. I haven't had the flu vaccine for 30 years. My kids don't get the flu vaccine. Well, you, you know, you're a terrible dad. You're a well, call me what you want. I don't think one of my children have had the flu. Have you? 16 years, almost 17 years old, maybe once. And within a few days got over it. God built our immune system to fight off sickness and disease. And if we take care of ourselves, our body, by the way God created it, will fight these things off. I say that I have four immediate, because I'm online around the world, I don't want to say names. I have four immediate family members, immediate, that just got COVID in the last week and a half immediate family members that got COVID-19 and within three days we're back up and going. They haven't had the vaccine. They haven't had the vaccine. And two of those immediate families, family members of mine were young children. What am I saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, if I just ask you what I'm saying and then listen. 
90, upwards of 90 some percent, almost 100% of people that get it recover. If your immune system is at risk, you are just as much at risk for any other sickness and disease as you are for COVID-19. And for those sickness and diseases, there ain't no vaccine. Why am I saying this? To be mean? No. I'm saying this because hopefully it'll help somebody or some people stop living in bondage and the fear of the four walls of their home and get out and live life that God's called you to live. I'm not negating that people have been, I, I have friends that I've known over the years that have died from COVID-19. Died. Now, that's what they said it was. But don't get me started on that. Because deaths are listed as COVID-19 that were never COVID-19 because if it's listed as COVID-19, the hospitals get money. See, you may not be hearing this. Oh, you're getting political, Pat. I ain't getting political. I'm stating facts. They get money if they list sickness and death as COVID-19 from the government. Now, they said it was COVID-19, but God only knows if it was. So I know that it's real. I know it is a sickness, and I'm not negating that, and I'm not trying to make anybody think. I, no, I'm sensitive to the fact that people are battling it. People I know that are close to me now are battling it. People I know close to me that battled it, went in the hospital, came out, and are fine. I get it. I understand it. What I'm trying to say to you is stop living in fear. As a child of God, he's not called you to live in fear and live in the four walls of your church, painting a window in the wall to make you feel like you're outside because you're afraid to walk outside. Huh. No, God's not called you to live like that. God's not called you to live like that. He's called you to live free. And let me ask you something. You've said for years. You've said for years. I believe I'm going to live to the fullness of my life and I won't take my last breath until the Lord's decided to take me home. Where is that faith now? You see, when we speak things, we have to be careful of what we speak because what we speak, we may have an opportunity to prove. What we speak about what we sing about and what we testify about we may have the opportunity here in the near future to prove and if it is appointed unto man wants to die are we not trusting the Lord enough to say if it's not meant for me to die in this season God's going to make sure I don't Well, God is my Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He is my this. He is my that. Well, let's prove it. Well, Pastor Brian, I, I don't want to prove it by being stupid and just going out there and opening myself up. Listen, every time we walk out of our house, we open ourselves up to something. Every time we walk out of our house. So how do we see that this is not rooted in fear? It's rooted in fear. This thing's been going on a year and a half now, or a year now. And it's really been going on for a year and a half because CDC documents prove 
that this thing was in existence at the end of 2019 before it was ever revealed in 2020. This thing's been going on for a year and a half. We were walking around, listen to me, we were walking around Anwar, we were walking around our jobs, our schools, our homes, our soccer fields, our, our basketball courts, our grocery stores. We were walking around these places for months while this disease existed and we never got it without a mask. Yet we think the only way we're going to survive this thing is with a mask. Now, I'll tell you where the mask has come in handy. My wife and I have been walking down the store, and I'll see somebody, and I'll make fun of them, and I can do it under my mask, and then not hear me. <laughs> no, that's true. I'm, I'm, you know, listen, I'm just, I'm having fun, but I'm, I'm, I'm being truthful. My wife and I were in the car the other day, and we were traveling in some place, and I said something that I was able to, I would have been able to say under the mask, and nobody know that I said it. You know, you can get mad at me all you want, but I like cracking on people. I do. I like cracking on people. Some of y'all need to just, that all, you just need to lighten up. I like cracking on people. I love laughing. I love, people crack on me all the time. I'm sure there's people that see me and see the back of my head and how bald I am crack on me. So, I, I like to do it. So the masks have come, come in hand. And I'm not, listen, some of y'all really need to lighten up and, 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 you know, really stop squeezing your butt cheeks so tight and just loosen up a little bit. Um, so I'm not negating the masks. I'm not saying that we need to not be careful. What I am saying is, is that our trust should not be in fear. Do you understand what I'm saying? So many people, they trust fear more than they trust God. Now, that, now that'll preach. Do you trust fear more than you trust God? Take that to your finances. Some people that are believers that tithed for years, years, stopped tithing during COVID. Don't sit there and say you trust God and you can't tithe during COVID out of fear that you may lose your job. That which you fear may very well come upon you. That which you fear may very well come up on you. I'm not speaking that. I'm speaking the opposite. God is saying, what do you want? You've taken care of me. Now I want to take care of you. Do you really think for one moment, and I know I got to close, but do you really think for one moment Many of you watching, do you really think for one moment you have put God first for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? You've put God first. Do you really think that in putting God first for so many years that God's going to reward you by killing you with COVID-19? If that is God, I'm going to stop serving him today. That's not the God I serve. I'm not saying you're exempt from COVID-19. I'm not saying I'm exempt from COVID-19. Every day I thank the Lord that it hasn't come upon me. I'm so It's his grace. It's his mercy. But let me be bold about it and also say it's also my faith. 
It's a combination. I'm not saying I will never get it, but I am saying I will never get it in Jesus' name. I'm, what I mean by that first one, saying I, I'm not saying I will never get it, I'm not saying that in arrogance. I'm saying it in faith, and I'm trusting the Lord. All of us trust the Lord that we will never get cancer, that we will never get this and we will never get that. And we trust the Lord and we have faith that we will never get it. I'm believing God that I will never get it. But one thing I do know is if my natural body becomes susceptible to it, he will give me the grace and I will be healed from it and I will overcome it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I can't be in fear about it. If I'm, not, if, I, if, if I'm in fear about it, I'm not trusting him. But do we really think... That he's not able to keep us from it. And if it were to happen, that we would not survive it. The devil has so many people bound right now. And is keeping you from living the full, abundant, promised land life filled with milk and honey here on this earth. Because you Trust the government more than you trust God. Let me say this to you, and I know i got to close. But let me say this to you. There's already talks. I'm not saying it's at the voting level in, 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 in the con Congressional House of Representatives and the Senate floor and all of that. But there's already talks that these stimulus checks, as they continue, there are already talks that the only way, there are talks that they are working on that the only way you'll get your stimulus money is by taking the vaccine. Where do you think this is coming from? Where do you think yes. this is coming from, ladies and gentlemen? Please, I'm not calling you this, but it's time for somebody to be bold enough to say it. Don't be stupid. Please, don't be stupid. Oh, I get these checks. I get these checks. I can count on these bonus checks. All I could do as a family, I can get $5,000 as a family. Boy, that'll pay off my car. That'll buy another car just to shoot me in the arm. Yeah, boop. It's all part of the system all part of the system if you come to the place of taking the vaccine in order to get money you have just become a puppet you have just become a puppet and you're no better than the Senate the senators and the House of Representatives that represent you because every one of them lie Every president, Trump, Biden, they're both liars. They're both liars. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the last days. And the world is going to grow worse. All of this started from this. The world is going to grow worse. But you, as a child of God, will flourish. And when you are a tree that's planted by the rivers of God, you will flourish, you will bloom, you will produce, and everything that you need will be there for you. All you will have to do is pluck it off the tree. When you are a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water in the midst of a desert. God will show you how to build an ark where there, when there is no wood. God will show you how to build an ark preparing yes. for the time and the season that's about to come when you are a child of God. 
God, you will be walking into a store and the Holy Ghost will say, don't go in that store. You will walk away from that store and then come to find out later something happened in there. I'm telling you we're in the last days and you got to as a child of God. My sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. It will be that ability to hear the voice of God that will save your life in the days ahead. Hallelujah. And I know there's a lot of people that don't like what I just had to say. You know why? Because you want to stay in your comforts of fear. Fear is comfortable. You know what? Then go ahead and be the same children of God that were complaining because they were brought out of the wilderness. But at least in the wilderness, they had food. They didn't want to be taken to the promised land because the promised land is uncomfortable. They would rather stay in slavery. Excuse me, I need to correct what I just said a minute. It wasn't the, they, need to, they would rather stay in slavery because they had food on the table. So you want to be beaten so you can eat? Well, I'm not being beaten. Nobody's physically beaten. You're being beaten down. Mentally. In fear, you're being beaten down. So you want to stay in bondage so that you can eat rather than pay a short price of an 11-day journey so that you can be in freedom. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't an 11-day journey. It was 40 years. Yeah, because the only reason it was 40 years is because of disobedience. Yeah. It was supposed to be an 11-day journey. As I close, I want to say this. If you will allow yourself to come out of fear... Your coming out of fear will be shorter than the last 18 months of you living in fear. I hope somebody gets what I just said. You've been living in fear since this COVID began. And God wants to pull you out of fear. And the process of pulling you out of fear will be shorter, in, of that, shorter than that which you've lived for the last year and a half. But the blessings will be far greater. <clears throat> if you believe if you believe however if you want to stay locked in the world system the world is going to grow worse and if you stay locked in the world system even as a child of God you stay locked into the world system you are going to face what the world faces But if you lock into the word of God, you lock into what the scripture tells you, then what the world is about to face, you are exempt from. You are exempt from it. If you lock in to what the word says. <clears throat> and the word says in Isaiah, he bore our sickness. He bore our diseases. And by his stripes, you were healed. You were healed. That means, Carissa, that when Jesus died on the cross, you were healed of all future and oncoming sicknesses and diseases. No matter what they are. Well, I, 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 I know that I, I, know, I know people that died of, of COVID and they believed God for healing. And uh, they were a believer. They were saved. Um, that means that they're in a better place. Maybe you're afraid 
of dying from COVID because you don't have a revelation of what heaven is like. I think for all of us, including me, we fear death because we don't have a revelation of what heaven is going to be like. I think when we have a revelation of what something is, we become less fearful of it. And I think the more time we spend with God, building that in love relationship with Him, we'll become less afraid of dying. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And to die is to live as Christ, but to die is gain. We have nothing to fear. And we are temporarily here. But we are going to be forever there. So we have nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to be afraid of. I challenge you today. Come out of fear. Fear has a grip on you. And I know. Well, how do you know? I know by my spirit. I've been doing this for a long time. There's a lot of people that are born again, that love God with all of their heart, that have dedicated their lives to Christ, and they're living in fear right now. You're afraid. You're afraid of what might come upon you, and that's not how God wants you to live. God wants you to live in freedom. Freedom isn't being stupid. You still be smart, but you don't allow it to control you. You don't allow it to bind you. Bind you up. Where it controls. Any outside source that controls, listen to what I'm about to say, any outside source that controls your decision enslaves you. It enslaves you. The devil has taken away your right to choose. Do you really think that it's the wisdom of God that takes away your right to choose? And I ain't talking about no Roe versus Wade. I ain't talking about that. Although that's a whole nother subject. Because what a, what's not being said in the media right now is there's a whole agenda by Biden and Harris right now. There's a whole agenda right now that's going to try and put a law in place that Roe versus Wade can never be overturned even by the Supreme Court. But that's what this fear that has gripped COVID night around surrounding COVID-19 has done. It's taken away your right to choose. Do you have a right to walk into a store without this? You do. You just don't know it. You have a right by law to walk into every store and say, I don't wear this. And if they don't let you in, they broke the law. You didn't break the law. They did. But the devil wants you to believe that, you, that your right to choose has been taken away. There are people that have certain jobs right now that have to be tested on a weekly basis or else they lose their job. Taking away the right to choose. Do you think for one moment what's not coming down the pike is our right to meet and be free as a church? Do you think they're not going to take that away? If you've been a part of this church for years, I've always said, what will you do when church services and praise and worship is taken away? What will you do? Well, Church meeting as a church has, hasn't been taken away. It's just COVID-19. I'm waiting for things to... I get it. I understand. But it's all part of the system. It's all part of the process. 
and the devil has gotten the church to believe that this is what's best for their health and it's deception at its highest degree. It's deception at the highest level because you are not being controlled by God. You're being controlled by systems. You, ladies and gentlemen, if that is you, you have become a slave. And I'm not trying to use that word disrespectfully. Because you have become a slave just like the children of Israel were enslaved to bondage. And the man of God was getting them out. And God brought a way of escape. And during the way of escape, they did nothing but complain about the comfort they had while in fear and while in slavery and in bondage. Get out of fear. Get out of bondage. Step out by faith. And be the man and woman of God that he's called you to be. And do not walk or live in fear anymore. You will see the provision of God. You will see the protection of God. in ways like no other. In Jesus' name. Maybe you're watching this broadcast and you've never given your life to Christ. Say this with me. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again for me. I give you all of me in exchange for all of you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And forgive me of all my sin. In Jesus' name. If you just said that, I believe you're a child of God. Heaven is your home. And God is your Father. And we want to hear about it. We want to know about it. In no way, shape, or form was this message meant to be critical, judgmental, mean, disrespectful or insensitive this message which the back half of this message was not even anything that I had planned to talk about was something that I believe was led by the spirit of God to pull you out and pull you into what God has planned and has ordained for you in this season of your life there's nothing that is happening right now that God did not know was going to happen before it ever did. And he's provided a way of escape. And your way of escape, ladies and gentlemen, is faith, not fear. In Jesus' name. We love you. We're glad you joined us. There's going to be some information up on the screen. If you've been blessed, I want to encourage you to sow a financial seed. It takes money to function. It takes money to operate. Those of you REACH members, I want to encourage you. Uh, to stay consistent with your tithes, with your offerings. We'd love to see your face. We'd love to see your smile. We miss you greatly. We'd love to hug your neck. Those of you that watch us online because you're too far away to come, we love you and we appreciate you. There's information up on the screen. You can text and give. You can go online to reachtampa.com, give securely online. You can PayPal. Uh, you can mail in a check. There's various ways that you can sow a financial seed. Do what the Lord tells you to do. We don't put pressure on anybody. That's just not who we are. We don't, we don't put pressure on anybody. We're just saying, do what the Lord tells you to do. And if everyone does what God says to do, there will not only be enough to meet the need, but there will be an abundance over so that we can be a blessing to those around us. Thank you for joining us. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.